I don't even need to pretend to be introducing an unknown character here. Chances are, when I say the name Roxanne Wolf, you know exactly who I mean. One of Five Nights at Freddy's newest stars, and one who has taken place high on the popularity pedestal. From the moment she was leaked on merchandise to the release of Security Breach, and even now, Roxanne Wolf is a huge deal. She's the red-hot racer. She's the winner. She's the best. She is absolutely crippled by insecurity and a constant need to overcompensate, with a sharp tongue dealing out the most biting of blows before retreating to her room to either lecture herself through a mirror or weep uncontrollably. She's quite a she-wolf, and today we are going to cover her in full. And that means starting at the beginning, which might have been long before Security Breach. In fact, the first counterpart to Roxanne might have originated in an unexpected location. The Twisted Ones novel. The Twisted Ones is the second novel in the Silver Eyes trilogy and introduces the Twisted Animatronics, a group of killer animatronics commanded by Afton to track down Charlie Emily, though they end up killing a few lookalikes in their quest. The lineup is as expected. Twisted Freddy, Twisted Bonnie, Twisted Foxy, and then an unexpected fourth. Twisted Chica, while revealed in merch, was not in the books. The fourth animatronic was a wolf simply known as the Twisted Wolf. The Twisted Wolf's appearance in the book is somewhat confusing. There is really no reason it should be there instead of Chica, and it pretty much just behaves like a more on-brand Foxy, unlike Twisted Foxy, who's half-buried for a majority of the book. Twisted Wolf isn't given a specific character beyond Mindless Monster, but that is on brand with the Twisted animatronics themselves. Now, you might say this is a huge difference from Roxanne, and it is, but this might have been the first step towards her character. The interest in having a wolf, but not yet having a way to implement it. Twisted Wolf, or a Wolfman cameo, appears in a poster in the alleyway of Pizzeria Simulator as well. It was after this point that the old wolf dropped off and we didn't see any more until Roxanne's first appearance. Now, technically she first appeared in the first Security Breach poster teaser, though you couldn't tell who she was. In fact, some people, myself included admittedly, thought for a while that she might be a baby variant. This was proven incorrect when her name was leaked sometime afterwards. That was when we found out about this new, mysterious wolf character, and a new girl to the Freddy's band. And technically, shockingly, Foxy's replacement in the band. It wasn't too long after that when the merch leak happened and when we saw Roxanne Wolf in all of her glory. Weirdly enough, I remember there was a post saying that the merch in the leak was unfinished, but I don't see any notable differences between their design there and their final one. That aside, there was Roxanne Wolf. To quickly cover Roxanne's design, she is pretty much the replacement to Foxy with a similar build, save the long hair and the puffy, fluffy tail both of which she takes an amount of pride in. Other than that, the red molded on clothes seem to almost resemble babies, but that could have just been due to the coloring, admittedly. People took to this new character almost immediately, and intensely. I mean, people were really into Roxanne Wolf even before they saw her in person or knew anything about her other than her name. That's one way to start a career, or the video game character equivalent, I suppose. But before Roxy's debut, she appeared in two side games released between then and the release of Security Breach, Freddy in Space 2 and Security Breach Fury's Rage. Roxanne only has a cameo picture in Freddy in Space 2, one of the victory poses where Freddy stands victoriously and before him is laid out the unnamed Roxanne, who seems to be a parody of Crystal from Star Fox, maybe. Roxanne's last cameo before her starring role in Security Breach was in Security Breach Fury's Rage, a game released to tide the players over before the game came out. Roxanne is one of the playable characters, her character having the highest luck. Here's one of her lines from the game. Give me a real challenge! Uh, just don't make a rug out of me. Now, here we go on to the main event, Roxanne Wolf's starring role in Security Breach, technically her canonical debut. Roxanne Wolf is no doubt the coolest of the cool, by which I mean she's the cool one of a group that's already marketed to be the cool ones. Advertised as a racer burning rubber, one with confidence and sass to boot, and a beautiful mane of flowing hair. Roxanne's marketing advertises her as someone who loves to race and compete, and someone who sees quitting as an actual loss. Hey, I'm Roxanne Wolf. If you're looking for high-speed motor mayhem, 
Roxy Raceway is the place to be. Sign up today and be a winner. Nobody likes a loser. As we will see later, like Chica's marketing, this comes back in a rather ironic way when it comes to Roxy's real personality. And before I get to that personality, let me go into her physical structure and her skills to get those out of the way. Roxanne Wolf is fast. She's faster in the beta trailer than in the final game, but she is supposedly the fastest of the group, and she hunts her prey by leaping at them. Sort of like Monty does, but with a quicker turnaround. Roxanne can also smell out her target, sniffing hiding spots until she detects their location. Now, I think this is just an audio cue, as I've had her smell directly above me and not find me, but it's still a cool detail. When on the prowl, she hunches over, claws bared. That mixed with the sniffing and the leaping on all fours really does portray her as the most animalistic of the group. Ironic again as, as we will soon see, Roxanne pretty much has the most fleshed out personality and the most obvious sentience of the group alongside Freddy himself. Roxy has two attractions devoted to her, Roxy Raceway, a huge draw to the Pizzaplex, and the Glamrock Beauty Salon. Roxy Raceway, Roxy Raceway is a large indoor go-kart track with bleachers, a gift shop, food stalls, rentable garage-based party rooms, and even bumper cars. It looks to be the largest attraction in the Pizzaplex. Unfortunately, it won't take you long to spot all of the construction work being done inside and outside of the raceway. This is because of a little problem with the foundation. The entire thing is sinking underground. There is a sinkhole problem and cracks are appearing in the track and on the concrete. This is, needless to say, a huge problem. Not just because this attraction holds so many weighted items, but because if everything collapsed at once on a day when people were in there, the casualty rate would be massive. And I say casualties because the pit beneath Roxy's waist beneath Roxy Raceway is deep, and the attraction is filled with plenty of sharp metal pieces that will fall on and crush people. This is why I get onto the whole underground pizzeria thing so much, because while I think Fastbear Entertainment is negligent, I have trouble believing a company that big would be stupid enough to put one of the most weight-demanding attractions over top of the massive sinkhole without so much as filling it up. It's baffling. But I digress. So Roxy is apparently a good racer. We don't know if the animatronics go-kart, but there are models for the go-karts painted for every animatronic, including Sun and Moon. A pipe dream, but I like to imagine the animatronics just all go go-karting around the Pizzaplex on their off hours. The other attraction is the Glamrock Beauty Salon, which is just what it sounds like on the tin. It's a beauty salon inside of a canyon and highway themed room with a playground out back and a photo shoot set up where you can get pictures with Roxanne herself, or perhaps just a plushie of her. Roxanne's choices and attractions play directly to her personality, with them symbolizing the things most important to her, her beauty and her racing skills, her looks and her ego. Listening to Roxanne's recordings, nobody likes a loser, or the insults she shoots at Gregory, want an autograph? I bet I'm your favorite. Give up. You can't win. You can't outrun me. You think you're better than me? I'm the best. You are nothing. Seems to portray Roxanne as someone self-centered and egotistical, putting herself on her own pedestal. However, the root of this comes from a place of severe insecurity, something we see very clearly throughout the game. Our first look at Roxanne's personality is her talking herself up through a mirror during the opening section of the game, obsessively telling herself how beautiful she is, how she is the best, how she is loved by everyone, inflating her own self-worth and talking herself up. Your performance was perfect tonight! Thank you. Your hair is beautiful. Your tail is beautiful. Everyone was watching you. Everyone loves you. Everyone wants to be you. You are the best. Thank you. I am the best. I am the best. Yet the next time we catch her in this position, after she fails to capture Gregory, she has completely crumbled, weeping, insisting that Gregory must be cheating. 
that it can't be her, that she couldn't have failed. <laughs> I'm not a loser. Why? Why? It's not your fault. That kid is just lucky. It's not fair. He must be cheating. Don't be a loser. Get back out there! She then snaps at herself to pull it together and press on. And she does. Also, if Freddy walks in at this time, she snaps at him to leave, to which he says, I'm going, I'm going. Who's there? Freddy, get out of my room! Though I've never gotten that audio track to work, I just see the subtitles. This is weirdly enough the only interaction we see between the bandmates. But back on track. See, Roxanne's got a huge ego, but it's fragile. To the point where the slightest knock, her not being able to find Gregory when nobody else could, sends her spiraling. Her self-worth is managed by a constant stream of praises, and without those, she will buckle. Though I should say here that I don't condone her behavior, telling a child that no one will miss him. Nobody will miss you. Non-subtly implying that she's going to do him severe harm is inexcusable. You can say this is just because she's possessed, but she at least seems somewhat in a cohesive frame of mind while sobbing in the mirror. She can dish it out, but she can't take it. Another thing she can't take is competition. She has to be the winner, the best, as shown in the cutscene where Gregory is able to provoke her into angrily throwing herself onto the track and confronting him just by driving in a go-kart. Now, originally, there was a go-kart minigame that was cut, but the dialogue seems to imply that it was just sort of a driving tutorial, not a race against Roxanne. What I'm getting at is that it's possible that in maybe the earliest plane of the game, that you were supposed to either beat Roxanne in a race or maybe have her chase you, it's unclear. While her current defeat is quite anticlimactic, it is an appropriate testament to her out-of-control ego that she's so sure of herself that she's willing to throw herself in front of a cart moving at full speed and seems shocked when the attempt to turn out of the way leads to it careening at her. Roxanne Wolf is a hot mess, and unlike Chica, whose borderline self-destructive tendencies involve herself, Roxy makes it everyone else's problem. Sure, she cries in private, but she's more than willing to lash out with the same insults that we know would break her. Though, as I just said with her defeat, Perhaps there is an amount of self-destruction here. Pride comes before the fall, and it's hard to say anyone falls harder than Roxy does. My face! My face! My face! Well, maybe Monty. What happens in-game is that Gregory leaps out of the car, and it crashes into her, and the two fall into an underground segment beneath Roxy Raceway. The cart landing atop her and crushing in her chest and face, her eyes dangling loosely in her head ready for the harvesting. Her hair, ruined. Tail, ruined. Face, totally deformed. Weirdly enough, this accident also leaves her burned. I think this is a mistake, as later on, she passes through fire, and there's actually a burning endo model of her unused in the game. So maybe the initial plan was to have her disintegrate more and more as she's hunting Gregory. That would have been really cool. But I can see how that might have to get cut. But there is something that breaks down over the course of the encounter. And it's Roxanne herself. If you thought she was balancing on the edge of collapse before, this is the turning point. Now damaged severely, her face scarred and her looks gone, Roxy's mental state seems to fully cave in. While before she had issues, but was still in a somewhat cohesive frame of mind, such as snapping herself out with a pep talk or sobering up to kick Freddy out of her room, she is now in complete turmoil. She wanders around sobbing and crashing into doors in fits of anger, flipping back and forth between denial and panic. I am still beautiful. I just need a little work done. This really is the worst possible outcome for Roxanne. This fate correlates with her one weakness, not the shattering itself, but the after effects. But let us not forget that in the end, this fate was of her own doing. You may argue that Chica's shattering was due to Gregory taking advantage of her own weakness, but Roxanne pretty much had no benefit to jumping in front of a moving cart. She did so because she's the best, she's the greatest, and carts will stop for her. And if they don't, let's talk about Roxy's lovely eyes real quick. They're beautiful, and also a bizarrely overpowered upgrade. 
While not seen in the gameplay, as it would be impossible to avoid her, Roxanne can see through walls and, in a message, has been noted to be spotted talking to staff bots through the walls in front of customers. The assumption is that this might be to help her out on the racetrack, but like with Chica's upgrade, it has led to staff complaints. With Roxy's eyes, Freddy can spot prize boxes through the walls, both open and unopened. A useful upgrade, but not beneficial beyond that. After Gregory takes her eyes, he attempts to leave, only for Roxanne to get back up and tackle through a door in pursuit. She's been blinded, obviously, if she doesn't have her eyes, and now proceeds to stalk Gregory based off the sounds he makes. I can hear you! I can still hear you! Though she's close in pursuit, and he must use her unabashed tackles to clear the way for him to progress. A quick side note here, but I had this awful glitch where Roxanne could still see me even though she was technically blind. This was supposedly patched out, but I haven't played that section since then, so I'm not sure if it was fixed or not. Roxanne pursues Gregory into a burning room that, for the life of me, I can't really figure out if that's what it's actually used for. Like, I think it's some sort of furnace, but they're stashing items in here, so... It's possible this isn't actually supposed to be on fire and maybe was supposed to be triggered by the wreck. Like I said earlier, there was a planned burning model, but it went unused in the game. Gregory escapes Roxanne, and this is the end of her tenure in Security Breach. Yes, she appears in the final boss, but not much happens there. So, what is next? Well, Chica's coming back in ruins, so Roxanne might, though I kinda doubt it. Being a DLC, I wouldn't be too shocked if the enemies are just Chica, Red Eyes up there, and probably Afton or Vanny. But there is a possibility that Shattered or Ruined Roxanne may get an appearance. After that, it's unclear, though it's possible with her popularity that she will appear again, maybe in a new model. As for the books, Roxanne has a few background roles, but nothing significant. Funny, it's called Tales of the Pizzaplex, and as of now, none of the main Pizzaplex animatronics have had significant roles in any stories save arguably the hologram of Moondrop. And yes, he is called Moondrop in that story. She doesn't appear in the upcoming clown merchandise line either, so I suppose this is the end of the line for Roxanne. Not too surprising considering that this was really her debut game. In all likelihood, we will see her again. Yet, I've gotta say that other than Glamrock Freddy, Roxanne is the most complete of the animatronics, at least in Security Breach. In fact, I would argue that she has more of a complete story arc than Freddy does. I know that might sound weird, but there's a basic but fitting step-by-step -step plot to Roxy's story instead of Freddy's. Roxanne is introduced in the beginning to be building herself up by talking to herself, propping herself up. And then later we hear her insult Gregory, not even hiding her animosity towards him. This builds her up to be someone prideful and cruel. Then we see that intimate moment of her in her room and realize this comes from a place of insecurity. If we read into it a little deeper, we could maybe even take from Roxanne's swift dismissal of Freddy that she would probably not accept help from others. This would line up with her quitters and losers mentality. While she doesn't say it exactly, she might even see her needing help as a weakness. We learn in a note that she is also harshly competitive, which mixed with her pride leads to her bizarre accident and she's brought full circle as she faces her biggest fear and loses her most prized possession. Not her eyes, but her looks, her perfection, her self-image shattered in an instant when it already stood on such shaky ground. I won't say it's a complete story as we don't yet know the end of it, if there is one, but it has more of a clear flow, a cause and effect to it, an Aesop, a tragedy, admittedly. And that's the story of Roxanne Wolf and how she is her own greatest enemy. While Security Breach's massive cuts led to many characters getting the short ends of the stick, including their would-be villain, somehow they managed to craft a very lifelike character in what is a robotic wolf. I've gotta give them kudos to that, and even if we don't see her again, she managed to leave quite the impression. With that, I too shall leave you for now. Thank you for watching.